Today we're going to be talking about how to solve the linear differential equations initial value problem. And in this particular problem, we've been given the linear differential equation x times y prime, or the derivative of y, is equal to y plus x squared times sine of x. And we've been given the initial condition y of pi is equal to zero. Now as a reminder, I've written the standard form of a linear differential equation, which is y prime plus p of x times y is equal to q of x. I also have the formula here for the integrating factor that we're going to need to solve this linear differential equation initial value problem. Now with any linear differential equation, the first thing that we want to do is try to change our differential equation into standard form. Now notice there's a couple important things about standard form. We have y prime, the derivative of y, out here by itself. Then we have y multiplied by some function in terms of x called px. And then we have another function over here on the right hand side, only in terms of x, called qx. So the first thing we want to do to change our equation into standard form is get y prime by itself. We only have y prime occurring once in our equation, and in order to get it by itself, we just need to divide through by x. So when we do that, we'll get y prime is equal to, we'll divide through by x, and we'll get here y over x, but let's go ahead and leave that as 1 over x times y. So that's the same obviously as y over x when we divide through by x, but we want to bring this x out in front of the y as a coefficient term here. Then when we divide x squared sine of x by x, we'll get one of these x's here to cancel and we'll just be left with x sine of x. Now from here we have y prime on its own, but on the left hand side of our equation in standard form we also need this term p of x times y. So this means some function in terms of x times just the first degree term of y here, and that's what we have here in this 1 over x times y. If we subtract it from both sides we get y prime minus 1 over x times y is equal to x sine of x. And now we have our equation in standard form. Our p of x function is 1 over x right here. That's our function in terms of x, which acts as a coefficient on this y term here. And then on the right hand side, we have a function that's only in terms of x, which is x sine of x. There's no y's or y primes left on the right hand side, and we have y prime over here on the left all on its own. So now our equation is in standard form for a linear differential equation. At this point with these type of problems, before I find the integrating factor, I like to change y prime into dy over dx, which is obviously the same thing, dy over dx, and then leave everything else as is. I'll show you in a second why that comes in handy later. But once I've done that, now I want to find my integrating factor, and the equation for the integrating factor is e raised to the integral of the function p of x dx. Well, remember that we've already identified the function p of x. So in order to find the integrating factor, we'll just use the formula. We'll say e raised to the integral of p of x. Now remember, if you have a negative sign here in front of your p of x function, you have to include it as part of p of x. Our linear differential equation in standard form is plus p of x. So if we have a negative sign here, we have to include it in p of x. So our p of x function we'll put here is negative 1 over x, and then of course we need our dx notation. Now in order to take the integral of negative 1 over x, we know that the integral of 1 over x is natural log of x, so what we'll get is e to the negative natural log of x, and from here we can take this negative sign and it becomes e to the natural log of x to the negative 1. This x to the negative 1 here is the same as bringing this negative sign out in front of the natural log. These two are interchangeable, it's the same thing. So we just took the negative sign and made it an exponent here on this x value inside the natural log. So ln of x to the negative 1, which is the same as e to the ln of 1 over x. x to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over x. It's important that we do that because we need the e and the natural log right here right next to each other so that we can cancel them. When we have them right next to each other like this, we can cancel them and call it just 1, and then what we're left with is simply 1 over x. When we had the negative sign here, e to the negative natural log, we couldn't do that, so we had to move the negative sign so that we could get them right next to each other like this. 
This means that 1 over x is our integrating factor. And the integrating factor is important because it's going to allow us to drastically simplify our linear differential equation and solve our initial value problem. What we'll do is take the integrating factor and multiply it through the left and right hand side of our linear differential equation in standard form. So what we'll get here is 1 over x times dy over dx minus 1 over x squared, when we multiply it through there, times y is equal to, here we'll get this x and this x to cancel, and we'll just be left with sine of x over on the right hand side. Now this is the part that's a little bit tricky and difficult to understand, but it's simple to do, practically speaking. What we want to do, and I like to think about it this way, all we're doing here is taking this d dx right here, and pulling it out in front of this 1 over x, y. So we want to pull it out in front, d over dx, and what we're left with is d over dx of 1 over x and the y, the y is left over here. Technically what this means is the derivative of 1 over x, y. But performing this operation, pulling the d over dx out in front of this term here, actually takes care of the entire left-hand side, and now we just set this equal to sine of x. And I'll show you why this works. Remember we just said that this left-hand side here means the derivative of 1 over x times y. Well, if we take the derivative of 1 over x times y, what we get is what we had before, 1 over x times y prime, or dy over dx, minus 1 over x squared times y. And you can check that for yourself if you want. If you use product rule to take the derivative of this function right here, 1 over x times y, you'll get the entire left-hand side here. So really you just need to think about it as, as long as you have your linear differential equation in standard form, and you change this y prime here to dy over dx, once you multiply through by your integrating factor, then all you want to do is pull out this d over dx from this first term right here. You're just looking at this first term. Pull out the d over dx and just leave the rest of the first term, which in our case is 1 over x times y. That takes care of the entire left-hand side and simplifies it so that it's much easier for us to integrate both sides and use our initial condition to solve it. So once we've done that, now we want to go ahead and integrate both sides of our equation. So we'll do this. The cool thing about integrating both sides in this case is that now we're saying on the left hand side here, we want to take the integral of a derivative because d over dx means the derivative of something here. So the integral and the derivative will actually cancel with one another because of course they're opposites and we'll just be left with 1 over x times y. That's the only thing we have left over on the left hand side. Over on the right hand side, the integral of sine of x is of course negative cosine of x, and we want to go ahead and add a constant integration over here on the right hand side because we're going to need to solve for this constant using our initial condition. Now that we've got the equation in this form, we want to solve it for y first before we plug in our initial condition. So we'll multiply both sides by x and we'll get y equals negative x cosine of x plus cx. And from here, we have an equation into which we can easily plug our initial condition. We'll plug pi in for x and 0 in for y. We'll get 0 equals negative pi cosine of pi plus c times pi. To evaluate that, we'll take cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative 1 times a negative pi is just positive pi. So we'll get 0 equals pi plus c of pi. If we factor out pi, we'll get pi times 1 plus c. We can divide both sides by pi because it's just a constant, so we get 0 equals 1 plus c. And then we subtract 1 from both sides and we see that c is in fact equal to negative 1. Now we can just take this value for c and plug it back into the equation that we found for y earlier. So then our final answer becomes y equals negative x cosine of x because c is negative 1 here, we'll get minus 1 times x, or just negative x. We can leave our equation, our final answer, like this, or if we want to, we can factor out a negative x, and we'll get y equals negative x times cosine of x plus 1. Either way, both are acceptable answers, but that is in fact the solution to this linear differential equation with the given initial condition. So I hope you found that video helpful. 
If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.